During the Tudor period, there were many executions carried out across England. Kings and queens such as Henry VIII and Mary I executed dozens of thousands of people, many in the name of religious crimes and heresy. To be declared a heretic was one of the most serious accusations during this time, and many were burned at the stake because of this. But the subject of religion and the problems caused by Henry VIII's break from Rome remained for decades and centuries after the Tudor period had ended. Following Elizabeth I's death, James I came onto the throne, uniting the crown of Scotland and England, but one of the most serious problems James faced was a gunpowder plot. Conspirators such as Robert Catesby and Guy Fawkes planned to blow up the royal family, including the king and his queen, and also half of London, in the name of their religious convictions. But even when the main conspirators had been killed, further roundups of religious figures and suspected members of the plot occurred. Today we look at one man who was linked to the plot, who encountered the horrific execution of being hanged, drawn and quartered. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Henry Garnet, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry Garnet was born around 1555 in Derbyshire, and he studied at a grammar school in Nottingham. He then became a scholar and attended Winchester College, and was known for being a very talented musician and the best student in the school. He left Winchester for London in 1571 and then worked as a proofreader, but here he rubbed shoulders with high-ranking members of society, including the judge who later presided over the gunpowder plotters' trial. Along with Giles Gallup in 1575, he set sail for Portugal, and the two then went to Rome, and they were part of the Society of Jesus, and they became prominent Jesuits. Whilst in Europe, Garnet studied under prominent Jesuit priests and scholars, and he was later ordained around 1582, and he then became a confessor, and he rose quickly inside the order. Many believed Garnet would be the leader of the Jesuit cause in England, and he was sent back to England in July 1586. At the time, being a Jesuit was very dangerous, as Elizabeth I was persecuting those who belonged to the order, and also persecuting prominent Catholics. He was liable for execution if he had been captured, but he started to try and spread the Jesuit cause. He did gather some support, and Garnet later witnessed a thanksgiving ceremony at St Paul's Cathedral, celebrating the defeat of the Spanish Armada, and Garnet later claimed that many of his supporters did back the Queen, and were fond of Elizabeth I, despite her persecution. Her government required that all Catholics should reject the authority of the Pope, and accept Elizabeth as the supreme head of the Church of England, and the Pope later tried to encourage Catholics to cause problems and rebel against Elizabeth I, and many began to plot her assassination. Inside of England, Garnet met with a number of new priests, and for a few years, Jesuits had technically been banished, and if they were caught, they were likely to be charged with high treason. Because of this, Garnet was regularly sought after, and was often forced to move houses and hide in priest holes. He was almost captured in Baddersley Clinton in 1591, and he would have been executed if caught, and further movement around England happened. He would attend the executions of other priests though, and was present at one execution in Tyburn, where he would secretly in disguise administer the last rites in the crowd. But many of his friends were caught and were executed. He remained on the move for a number of years, but in 1605 he was staying in a room on Thames Street in London, and here he met with Robert Catesby. The pair spoke, and Catesby asked Garnet about the morality of killing innocents for a bigger cause as in the gunpowder plot. Garnet believed he was trying to raise a rebellion in France to invade England, and Garnet was not really like Catesby. Catesby was referred to as a crusader who does not hesitate to employ the sword in the cause of virtues which he considered spiritual, and Garnet believed things would be best settled by God and what he truly wanted. Garnet and Catesby met again, and it's clear that Catesby was planning the gunpowder plot, and may have been trying to get Garnet involved in it. He later claimed he was ignorant of what Catesby was planning, and other priests approached Garnet, as they had been told of the plot as well. It's likely he felt uncomfortable with this knowledge, and he claimed to later prevent a number of outbreaks of violence, and he wrote to Europe saying that there was a risk that some private endeavour may commit treason, or use force against the king. He asked the Pope to warn against violence, and he did rub shoulders with a number of the plotters. When the gunpowder plot failed, Henry Garnet was at Cofton Court when he heard it had gone wrong, and Garnet was shocked. He told others to abandon their plan and to flee, 
and then spent a number of weeks on the run, before he was arrested on the 27th of January 1606 at Hinlip Hall. He had been holed up in a priest hall for eight days whilst investigations took place, and the priests he hid with had to remain patient. However, they were later captured, and Garnet was then brought in front of the Privy Council. The advisers treated him with respect, and they removed their hats when they spoke to him. He was questioned about his links to the gunpowder plot, and the letters he had received from Robert Catesby. Garnet was then transferred to the Tower of London, and was held in a very fine chamber, and he was allowed wine with his meals in a fireplace. The lieutenant of the Tower treated him very well, but he was interrogated heavily. He knew he could have been racked for more information, and it's believed that he was in fact tortured, and because of his pain he did give over some information about the gunpowder plot. He was placed on trial on the 28th of March 1606, and was taken by coach to the Guild Hall. The government accused him of being involved in treason, dating back 20 years, to the reign of Elizabeth I, and he was linked to other possible Jesuit-encouraged plots against Elizabeth I. It took only 15 minutes for the jury to find Henry Garnet guilty of treason, and he was then sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered. He wrote to the king saying he was against violence, and he then spent around three months inside the Tower of London. On the 3rd of May 1606, he was strapped to a wooden hurdle, and was taken by three horses to the courtyard of St Paul's. He wore a black cloak over his clothes, and had his eyes closed during the journey. He was asked when he got there of any treasons he may have known about, and he said he had committed no offence against the king. Whilst on the scaffold he spoke to the crowd, and claimed he was innocent further, and also stated he was going to be killed on the day of the Feast of the Cross. He at the bottom of the gallows where the ladder was, prayed on his knees, and then he disrobed and then climbed the ladder. A Protestant minister came forward, saying he was ever meant to die a true but perfect Catholic, and a bishop said we are all Catholics. He then had the noose secured around his neck, and then the executioner pushed him off the ladder, leaving him hanging. Just before Henry Garnet was killed, he was cut down alive, but many in the crowd may have pulled on his legs when he was hanging, and it was said he did not suffer the death, as he should have, because the crowd may have killed him before he actually hit the floor. The executioner quartered him, and beheaded him, and when the executioner held up his heart in his hands, and said, Behold the heart of a traitor, there was simply no response. His head was then later placed on a spike, above London Bridge, to act as a warning to everyone else, about the dangers of being a Catholic Jesuit. Many were greatly upset by the death of Henry Garnet, and he was one of the leading Catholics across England. Others viewed him as a dangerous and treasonous individual, who was committing crimes, even dating back to the reign of the previous Queen. He was linked to the gunpowder plot, and possibly should have been stronger in his denial. It's also interesting to consider that he probably should have gone to live in Europe to save his own life, following the failing of the plot. But he definitely succumbed to a very brutal execution. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.